This next part's my favorite part uh, of this time to shine. Gonna do the two step then cowboy boogie. Grab a sweetheart and spin out with him. Do the hold down and get into it. Take it to the left now and dip with it. Don't throw down, take a sip with it. Now lean back, put your head, sit it. It's simple, you can do it. Slide to the left, slide to the right. Now cool down, have a good time. Slide to the left, slide to the right. Do the butterfly, have a good time round, round, round around you go. It's time to show out right now and take to the floor. Ethan, hurry up, we're starting, come on. Hello, Fergus Falls, and welcome to this fall's first edition of Otter Update. I'm your host, Caden Peterson. Ethan, where were you? Uh, I was getting a drink of water. With toilet paper in your pants? <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, this is Otter Update. Let's go, focus right. up. I'm your co-host, Ethan Danner, and boy, do we have a lot of news for you today. We sure do. Let's start with all the exciting stuff happening around Kennedy. We'll hear about our new superintendent and the new hall monitor. We have a hall monitor? In fact, we do. Mr. Tilke will even explain why in addition, and we also have some great changes coming up for our cafeteria. Let's do it. All right, senior reporter Ethan Mingy here, and today we are going to interview our brand new superintendent, Mr. Drake. All right, senior reporter Ethan Mingy here with our brand new superintendent, Mr. Drake. So, Mr. Drake, what made you come to want to come to Fergus Falls? Well, I was excited about a new challenge. Uh, it's coming at a good time in life. Uh, I just turned 52 years old in September, and our uh, youngest child, Connor, is a senior at Battle Lake, so we're about to become empty nesters. And uh, I like to stay in a place long enough to make a difference and become integrated into a school and community. And looking at the number of years I have left on my career, it just seemed like a great opportunity to uh, make a change. Uh, this is quite a bit bigger district uh, than Battle Lake. And so it offered a new challenge for me, a new opportunity to kind of grow and stretch personally and professionally. And uh, so far, it's just been a great transition for me. I've been very, very happy here. All right. Yeah. The problems of Fergus is space what are some visions you have of the next steps to take towards making the space better? Mm -hmm. So uh, definitely as the school's population or enrollment increases, uh, that can create some space challenges. Um, I've heard the cafeteria is pretty crowded. Um, and I tried to get down there this morning, but I was a little bit too late. But I want to get down in the cafeteria before school where the um, middle school students congregate because I've heard that's pretty crowded too. Um, so lunch is an issue, uh, classroom space is an issue, um, not just at KSS, but also with our elementary uh, schools. Uh, we haven't, uh, uh, we really haven't ironed out a vision yet, uh, but one facility that gives the district some flexibility with space is the new acquisition of the former Target building, uh, which has been renamed now Lincoln School. And uh, presently, that's really planned to be a kind of a preschool, um, early childhood center, uh, that type of uh, role in the district. Uh, but only about a third of that space is spoken for in that design. I think we will probably continue to explore how to best use Roosevelt um, as an educational facility as well. Alrighty, well thank you for giving us a look into your plans and your personal life and everything so far for the school year. Thank you, Mr. Drake. Thank you, it was a yep. pleasure. All right, Senior Reporter Ethan Mingy here with Mr. Abrahams. So, Mr. Abrahams, what improvements has uh, Mr. Drake, the new superintendent, done so far this year? Well, I think just bringing in any you know, new ideas, uh, things like that is a positive thing. Uh, one thing he did uh, say when he came in is he just wants to, to really listen and and look at what we have here in our district, the, the positives or things that maybe need to be changed and kind of take that in. And then and it's kind of a slow process to then evaluate. So he didn't come in and just immediately start uh, making changes, but uh, he, he's got a lot of great ideas when it comes to talking about culture and talking about the different things. And, and so it's been a very uh, positive experience here the first couple months. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Abrahams. This is Senior Reporter Ethan Mingi signing off. Senior Reporter here, Taysen Ambu, with Lance Wells, Food Service Director. Uh, all right, Lance. 
So what are the new changes that you're going to make to the lunchroom? Well, they're, they're pretty exciting. Um, we have a lot of changes coming up. Um, the biggest of which is we're going to turn in our classic serving line here at uh, the Kennedy Cafeteria into a full-on university-style food court with a lot more choices. Um, we're converting this from a serve one student at a time to a scramble area concept where kids will mill about and get their meals. Um, which will serve faster and uh, we'll be able to offer a lot more variety. We're also going to be expanding the fruits and vegetable uh, options. And probably one of the biggest changes is, is that the salad bars that we're putting in are going to be able to be accessed all the way around. And so you don't have to wait for each student to carefully select the carrot that was perfect in their mind while they're talking about the dance or the game. Um, kids will be able to move on, get their food, get on out of the food court and get on with their lunch and enjoy their day. And uh, where did some of these decisions like come from? Uh, well, uh, when I was hired originally last year, the superintendent was very adamant about that we needed to bring this program back, uh, you know, kind of into what uh, other school districts are doing to provide a consistent service that um, students here have seen on the internet and seen out there. Um, I was actually innovating these food court concepts 21 years ago, and so um, this will be my sixth food court conversion to go from what we have now into something that's really grand and amazing. So um, a lot of that is just the trends and the needs to meet the students. All right. Thank you, Lance, you for your time. Thank you, guys. Senior reporter Michael Wiedrich here with Connor Ackerson. So, Connor, what do you think about the school lunches? I think they're getting better, but it might still need some changes. Okay. What are some changes that you got in mind? Uh, I think they need to move more kids from early lunch to late lunch. Okay. Do you enjoy the lunch right now? Mm, yeah. What are some things you'd like to see in the lunchroom, like food-wise? Um, I don't know, maybe different taco options. You got chicken, beef, I don't know. Some creative, pork maybe. Senior reporter, Michael Wiedrich here with. Cole Halverson. Do you think our lunchroom needs changes, Cole? I'd say so, yeah. Okay, what kind of changes do you have in mind? Well, with like the actual like lunchroom itself, um, I don't know, it's kind of crowded a lot. A lot of people. Yeah, I feel that. So, Cole, do you enjoy the lunch right now? To be honest, not really. Why not? They kind of like have the same thing a lot. They don't really change it up a lot. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Cole. Wow, dude, that was a lot of information. Yeah. Did you see? Do you know that a prosthodite was the? Dude, what are you doing? First of all, you don't read, and second of all, this is Otter Update. You need to focus. Let's go. Okay. Sorry. Probably enough to watch it a couple of times to get all that information down. You know, that's not a bad idea. It is on YouTube 24 7, so you can watch it whenever you want. Yeah, we just have to head the address on the screen and we can look at some of the students' great work. Well, now back to business. Ethan, have you noticed all the huge green bins all around school? Yeah, I think I, I, think I threw a kid in one of them one day. Ethan, first of all, no dunking freshmen. And second, those are not garbage cans. I'll let Miss Erickson explain. Fine, fine. We also have a couple of student groups to hear from. We'll catch up on the bad news about vaping. Let's cut to the scene. Perfect. Senior reporter Tucker Ugstead here with Miss Erickson. How are these new single sort recycling bins going? Well, uh, I think they're going um, fairly well. It's a new um, way of doing things here at KSS, and we're super excited about it. Uh, right now we have 30 of these beautiful green cans throughout the building. All of them are like the ones that people in the city of Fergus Falls have. Uh, there's a picture on the top with what can go in them and what cannot go in them. Um, and then they get emptied uh, once a week. Do you have an issue with people putting in stuff that shouldn't go in there? Well, we have a garbage can next to every single sort recycling can in the building. So people have a choice. Um, in the classrooms, teachers still have their small wastebasket, but they also have either a uh, single sort container or a box like we used to have in the past, but now they can put everything um, that's recyclable in it. Um, the only thing I'm finding when I walk around and do a little inspection, three things. One are things like candy wrappers, um, you know, like a Rice Krispie bar wrapper. Those things are not recyclable. Um, and uh, but you know one through seven plastic is recyclable. You just have to look at the bottom. Uh, also, no food, no food 
um, or liquid um, goes in these containers. Food has to go into the regular um, garbage can. And if at all possible, we would like you to try to empty the liquid, not because um, that's the worst thing in the world, but because then we have to clean these more often because we get them emptied and then we bring them back into the school and they'll attract things like fruit flies and they'll smell and and things like that so those three things but other than that we are really really finding that people are participating and that is awesome so on mondays um, my eighth graders go around and pick up the single sort from the classrooms and then they find a container like this that's not full and empty it into it that's just to help the classroom teachers out in the offices and anybody that has a workspace um, just to help them out and then on on tuesdays my first hour seventh graders go and find their container and bring it out to the sidewalk by the gold gym and they get emptied and then my second hour seventh graders go find an empty one and bring it back to their station so we have a lot of organization going on but once we do it the first time it just flows and it seems to be working perfect all right so what we learned from that was don't throw candy wrappers or food and try to empty out your drinks Miss C. Oh, sorry. Senior reporter Brady Statham here. Talk to you about some more after school activities and one before school, FCA and pet band. Senior reporter Brady Statham here with Kaylin Bosworth. So Kaylin, I hear you're in the pet band. Is this true? Yes. Um, what would you say your um, biggest memory or most fun time of being a pet band is? Um, I'd probably say like one time we had like 80 kids playing at one time and it was super loud and the whole room was like super hyped. Yeah, it really was. Um, so what would you say to those that are like maybe on the fence about it or I'm not sure if they should join? Um, come and join and just try it for like one time and if you like it, which you probably will, um, stay in it. It's a lot of fun and sometimes we eat like donuts at practice and stuff. It's cool. One more question. I'm going to throw it on the fence. Um, should we be scared of Mr. Cumro? Yes. All right. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Senior reporter Brady Statham here with Mr. Cumro. How are you doing today? I'm good. How about you? I'm good. I'm going to ask you some questions about pet band. Is that all right? Yep. What would you, who can join pet band? Really, uh, mostly open to band students. I mean, that's definitely where we start in the core of our group. We are open to taking some other people on um, on a case-by-case -case scenario. So sometimes people come up to me and want to join for various reasons, and um, we talk about it, and sometimes we let them play with the band too. Perfect. How important would you say it is to have a pet band at some of these games or even playoff games? Well, I mean, I think um, I think the pep band does bring a, an, an atmosphere, a different atmosphere to a game. Um, and uh, I also think, like, when it comes to playoff stuff, that we're able to bring a sense of, um, you know, ownership to whatever wherever we are. So kind of meaning that we, we, we try to make that space our gym, our, our field, our court, whatever it might be. Um, and hope, we hope that it helps the team and, and, and for them to feel that as well. Okay, thank you. Yep. Chloe, I hear you're an FCA. Why don't you tell us about that? So FCA stands for Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Um, we are um, a club, I guess you could say, that, and we meet um, on Thursday mornings, the first and third Thursday of every month. Um, so what would you say your role is in this whole organization? Do you have a special role or anything? Um, well, I'm one of the student leaders. Um, I just kind of help out wherever is needed. I'll um, go hang out posters, <laughs> um, or like I'll just help in getting it going every morning and stuff. Yeah. Perfect. Stuff like that. All right. So first and third Thursdays, seven thirty, Miss Johnson's room. Come for some games. Talk about God, and there's always a little food, little breakfast for you too. <laughs> Sounds like I'm gonna go there. This is Matt Kramer, and I'm going to interview a few people around the school about teens vaping. Senior reporter Matt Kramer here with... Mr. Tilkey. Mr. Tilkey, how do you feel about vaping? You know, I think back to the early years where vaping devices came out, it seemed to be maybe a reasonable uh, approach for those who are trying to quit smoking cigarettes, and I think that trend has switched to maybe a, a gateway into a starting um, habit of getting into other 
things like cigarettes are even worse. So it's, it's something that is obviously not healthy for our, our youth, for sure. Do you think it's a problem here in Fergus Falls or Kennedy? You know, based on the knowledge that I do have, it seems to be a problem everywhere amongst uh, youth, you know, probably ages 12 to 28 and who knows beyond that. But, you know, you talk to other school officials and, and you hear what's going on in other schools and it's uh, really no different here than many other places. And, and the adults that are in charge of schools and parents involved are trying to figure out ways to help educate kids so that they understand just exactly what it is that they're getting into. All right. Thank you. My pleasure. Senior reporter Carla Krebs with Antela Harston. So what's baffling is that people that have been smoking since like a young age, cigarettes, they are getting cancer now. But kids that are vaping for a couple of years, they're dying. And there's like there's no way to explain it really. Is there? I mean I think the big thing is I mean, our lungs need to be healthy. And when we put nicotine in our lungs or we put any substance in our body, your body has to adjust to it. And when you put the vaping product in your lung and the liquid goes into your lungs, your lungs aren't supposed to have liquid. So it's replacing the oxygen ability to enter your body and to make everything in your body work right. Um, it is damaging the lungs way faster than we ever knew. And the permanent damage isn't going to be fixed. Um, the tobacco product itself, the, the smoking, the chewing tobacco, the cigars, that's putting the nicotine in your body with air and other like air products and all the chemicals and whatnot that we have in the air and that are in the product. But the liquid is, I think, causing the most damage really fast. And that's what's catching people off guard and nobody's ready for that. Because that liquid stays in your body well your body has to clear it out and if they're putting in a ton of that vaping product into their body with that liquid your body can't filter it out quick enough you're with the liquid being in there it's causing infections and I think ultimately the infections are what's getting them thank you <laughs> you're welcome I knew vaping was bad but I didn't know it was that bad for you Man. vaping is bad dude bad news thanks Miss Harstead for explaining that so well well and some better news Fergus Falls' own Viking Cafe is going green with their silverware and takeout boxes. Wow. It's great to see the established restaurant making changes to our environment. We also have a couple brand new restaurants in town, including the food truck, Fish Factory 108. Ethan, I believe you're a fan. This is very true. You just have to watch. All right. Senior reporter Hayden Scholl here down at the cafe. Let's go ask some questions about the new silverware. CD reporter Hayden Scholl here with Pat Scholl, owner of the Viking Cafe. We came to interview you a few questions about going green. So Pat, rumor has it the cafe is going green. What changes are you making in the restaurant? We have, to get rid of all the plastics and styrofoams, uh, I think I've replaced all those. So as an example, I think it's uh, 15, no, it's 25,000 plastic straws that we're not using anymore. They're paper straws, uh, which get a little flimsy, but it's better for the environment. Uh, it goes over where 15,000 pieces of knife forks and spoons that we send out we replace those and those would be a starch based uh, material and the to-go boxes instead of styrofoam we replace those with a fiber base which just decompose so that's what we've done what prompted you to make these changes I would say a lot of customer demand the ones that get to take out food didn't like the plastics and the, they felt bad just taking the styrofoams out with them um, anything we watch in the news environment's always number one and in, in, uh, anything we could do to help since we have so many pieces that go out each year anything we can do to help I figured we might as well do it now do you think other restaurants in this area should be doing the same thing? I suppose at some point, I think they'll probably just take away styrofoams and plastics, but uh, we chose to do it because our customers wanted it, so it was just a response. So they can choose for their customers what they want to do. How did you end up finding these plant-based materials? Uh, through my suppliers. Uh, I had them do some research, knowing that everybody's going to have to do this sooner or later, and they did some work for me, and I, we just picked the ones that we liked the best. So we had some options to choose from, and we sampled our customers and found them that way. Thank you for letting us come out of the cafe and ask some questions about the new silverware you're using here. Thanks for coming down, son. Anytime, Dad. 
senior reporter Caden Peterson here with Peggy, waitress at the Viking Cafe. Peggy, we're going to ask you a few questions about your new utensils. Okay. Peggy, what are your thoughts on the new utensils? Um, I like the utensils in the to-go boxes. I don't like the straws, though. <laughs> so do you think that you'll keep using these new utensils, or do you think you'll eventually end up going back to the plastic? Um, I think we'll keep with this one. Yep. And um, I think it's better that we do. Awesome. So we asked Pat the same question, but what are your thoughts about other restaurants following in these footsteps on the new utensils? Um, I think they should try it. You know, if they don't like it, they can always switch back, but I think it's um, worth a shot, you know, for being more eco-friendly. Senior reporter Katie Peterson here with Peggy. Thanks for having us down to the Viking, Peggy. Yep. Thanks for coming. Thanks for interviewing me. All right, we're going to try this fresh food. Do you want to take the first bite? Oh, well, go ahead. All right. I did this for you guys, so you can try them. You can hold the mic. Oh, my gosh. Is it good or what? That's the best food I've ever had, hands down. What do we got here? Shrimp? Shrimp quesadilla. Oh, my gosh. The flavor and freshness is exploding in my mouth. He is so right. The chipotle sauce. It tops it. The sauce, the meat, this, oh, it's, it's insane. The shrimp is awesome. That's absolutely delicious. How much does this run? Uh, six bucks only. So not bad at all. Well, for six bucks, this is absolutely hands down the best meal you can get. So it's worth it. Oh, this is worth it. I, am, I highly recommend everyone to come check out Fish Factor. This is, I mean, this place is awesome. Run by good people and amazing food. That is absolutely delicious. Thank yeah, you. come and join us and I really hope you like our food. So we wait for you so you can get some of our food. We'll definitely come back here again. Uh, I highly recommend everyone come here. I mean, this is the best food I've had in my life. I'm not lying, hands down. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. All right, Brody. I want your opinion. This is your first bite. This is his first bite of this fresh shrimp quesadilla, right? Yep. Wow. It's insane, right? It looks very good. I mean, you, you can taste the fresh. Like, this is all fresh. This is insane. For only $6. This is like, look at that. Mm. For six bucks, you can't go wrong. And I, I, I highly recommend everyone come here. I mean, if you can, it's probably worth it. I don't know if Tilky's gonna like this, but I would definitely <laughs> sneak out a lunch for this. Six oh, yeah. bucks, I'll, I mean, you beat a la carte and everything for sure. Yeah, yeah. The presentation is beautiful. Got the little salad in the corner. That chipotle sauce adds an awesome kick to it. It's just, it's, it's a very Spangler, good Spangler, get in here. If you, like, what do you feel about this? This is probably the best meal I've had. It's so good, I highly recommend it. It's great. It it's absolutely delicious. Yeah, I could sit here and eat this all day, dude. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, like and, and the, the atmosphere, the the smell, and like just being by the food cart is awesome. I mean, that's awesome. I'm giving this a ten out of ten. Oh, ten out of ten for sure. For absolutely. The price, it's unbeatable. Yeah, it is so. This good. is exactly what this town needs. It's bringing flavor. It's affordable cost. I mean, this is awesome. I highly recommend everyone. Ethan, how much did you say that meal was again? It was six bucks. Dude, that's a steal. Yes, it is. In all seriousness, though, it does look really, really good. Yes, it is. You know what else is amazing? I do. Video Productions! We're going to leave you with a couple of student projects. Remember, you can check out hundreds more at our YouTube channel. Till next month, keep it classy, KSS. Signing off. Well, Harv, this looks like a pretty good house to me. What do you think? Yeah, Larry, I heard that they're out for vacation. Yeah, this is definitely the house. Let's come back tonight at 7 and rob it. Yeah. Go up and check and see if anyone's in the house. Why me? Come on, just do it. Oh, fine. I made my family disappear? Mom, Dad, you better come get me. I'm eating bananas and watching scary movies. Larry!
free. House is good. <gasps> Someone's here. I need to do something about that. Look. Looks like pretty empty over here. Okay, sounds good. You run around back and I'll get this entrance over here, right? Okay, let's go. you boys a little lesson on eating bananas, huh? You like that, bud? <laughs> Let's do it! Okay. Matt Foley, get up here now. We gotta have a talk with these boys. Get up here. Alright, how is everybody today? Now as your father probably told you, my name is Matt Foley and I am a motivational speaker. Now let me give you a little scenario about what my life is like. I am 35 years old, divorced, and I live in a van down by the river. Now you're probably saying to yourselves, you're going to go grab the world by the tail and wrap it up and put it down and put it in your pocket. Well, I'm here to tell you that you ain't gonna amount to jack squat! Alright, how about you, fellow? What do you want to do with your life? I want to live in a van down by the river. Well, let me tell you this. You'll have plenty of time to live in a van down by the river when you're living in a van down by the river! Now, what do you want to do with your life? I want to be your chef. Let me tell you something. You're going to be doing a lot of cutting bananas when you're living in a van down by the river. Dude, bananas isn't going to make me live in a van down by the river. I tell you what, son. I tried bananas and look at me. I'm living in a van down by the river. <laughs> I give up. Bro, you that's, come eat that's bananas a King Kong banana. Do it straight down by the Don't river. do it. Don't do it, bro. Mm. Uh, mm. Oh, God. All right, man. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Easy, boys. Easy, easy. Let's go to the Let's go to Let's go 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 no more bananas ever again. Never again. Right, never again. Never again. Never again. Bring it in, boys. Bring it in, bring it in, boys. Dude, that guy's going freaking bananas. Look at him. Look at him. Dude, he's going crazy. He's going bananas. He's going crazy. He's going crazy. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Where does he go, dude? Oh my gosh.
That was not so bad. That was that that was not so bad, was it? That was not so bad. That 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 was not so bad, was it?